how do we actually go solve this? So let's put this in practice. Uh, as we can see, the only two things we need to compute is this Aij and L of H. So let's do some additional uh, thinking about uh, what they are going to be. All right. So Aij is equal to my A of Hi Hj. And that is, uh, let's go back to this definition of A. In this case, my A is equal to, okay, let me write down, minus integration uh, of duh, 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 partial G, which is the uh, Hi derivative times Hj derivative, right? Uh, that's right. And uh, plus, uh, d -d 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 which one? Pardon? Oh, sorry. Okay. The second uh, uh, Hj times partial Hi partial x. Uh, so, so let's imagine we are solving from the interval 0 to 1. So that will be 0 to 1. All right. Okay. And my B j is equal to L of h j which is equal to g times f so h j times my right hand side f and uh, uh, now let's plug in the form of h i and h j to see what they are so first let's look at the first term Okay, this is x, this is hi. And uh, we remember our basis function are like this. So this is xi, xi minus 1, xi plus 1. So if I get another different basis function hj, so let's say this is xj, xj plus 1, xj minus 1, I get another function that looks like this. So, uh, okay, so first of all, this, let's, let's look at, uh, let's ignore this term for a while because uh, this is only non-zero if one of these, actually if both of these touches the boundary, right? If both of these are at a location where, uh, where the, this basic function actually touches the boundary. So, when would be the cases where this first term would be non-zero? Clearly, in the case I have drawn over here, this integral is zero, right? Because the derivatives doesn't even overlap in their non-zero regions. So, can somebody summarize the cases in which the first term would not be zero? Yes, when i minus j, when the difference between i and j is less or equal to 1. If they are off by 2, then this xj plus 1 would be exactly equal to xi minus 1, and they miss each other exactly, right? So, so when they are off by 2, this integral would be 0. And if they are off by 1, or if they are the same basis function, they won't be 0. So let's figure out both cases. The case where I'm integrating the same function, so both are hi, so i is equal to j, would be what? Would be I'm, I will be integrating over from xi minus 1 to xi, the square of this derivative, plus I'm integrating from xi to xi plus 1, also the square of these derivatives. Right, I'm integrating these in piecewise in each element because I know in each element they are a linear function, right? So, so it's a lot easier to separate the integral in terms of elements. 
Okay, so the first uh, thing comes to um, well, uh, because they are constants, I will just uh, write it down as 1 over xi minus xi minus 1 times what is the derivative uh, in the left side? It's what? Um, sorry, I think I wrote it wrong. So the the derivative, yeah, the derivative is actually x i minus x i minus one, right? Because I need to square it, I I square it, and then the length of the integral is x i minus x i minus one, right? So this is the this integral. Yeah, in finite element, you'll be doing a lot of integrals, uh, I promise. So the second term is going to be the same thing, um, but the derivative is going to be negative. But because I'm squaring it, it doesn't matter. Square xi plus 1 minus xi. All right. So this is the first case when the two indices in the basis function coincide. The second case is when I have derivative in one thing and uh, I have the next basis function. So that, uh, in this case, there is only one interval, one element in which these two basis functions overlap, right? And that is xi to xi plus one. So in this, in this case, the first derivative, uh, the first uh, uh, term in this product it, which is the derivative of hi. Uh, right, the derivative of hi is negative. So, and the derivative of hi plus 1 is the same quantity but has a positive sign. Right, so when you integrate it, you get the same, pretty much the same thing as this term but with a negative sign. And of course, uh, you can just uh, cancel this with the square, and cancel this with the square, and cancel this with the square, right? OK. Uh, any questions on this? Yes. So I went from the definition of uh, uh, hi and hi plus 1, right? So, so because uh, for all the basis functions, you get to 1 at, at xi and uh, you have to become zero at the next uh, uh, grid point. So the slope, which is the derivative, has to be 1 minus 0 divided by xi minus xi minus 1. So this is just uh, the derivative of one of these functions. Uh, and uh, you get a negative sign if you are looking at the interval on the right side. Right, you have a downward slope. You get a positive sign if you're looking at the slope on the left side of this peak. Right? Okay. So this is going to allow us to fill the matrix. And uh, uh, this is a special term on the boundary. We'll talk about boundary conditions a little bit. Uh, actually, in the next lecture, we'll be focusing on boundary conditions. The case we want to look at now is very simple. The case we want to look at is the case which the boundary conditions are all zero. So if the boundary conditions are zero, that means when I restrict myself into a subspace, my subspace has, has to satisfy the boundary condition. Right? So, so um, that means the subspace which I look for my solution and also the subspace which I test my solution on. Right? The, the functions I multiply with the residual and integrate should also satisfy the same boundary condition. So this term is going to is equal to zero if hj is equal to zero at the boundary at the boundaries. 